Okay, let's take a uh, moment and look back at the week that was in earnings. Uh, earnings season is still uh, still going going strong, and we had a few companies that we that we keep on our radar here uh, that announced last week. And we'll go ahead and open with Visa. Uh, Visa. I mean, I'll just give you my quick takeaway looking at it. I mean, this you don't really want to read too terribly much into what this company is doing because it's kind of a uh, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Situation, I guess. But I mean, you look at Visa payments volume was up eleven percent. Transactions were up twelve percent. Uh, we talked about this before. They did raise the dividend uh, prior to the announcement. I, for one, have been critical that they should raise their dividend more. When you look at the amount of money they've spent on share repurchases versus what they've given shareholders as dividends, but. I mean, you know, it's still working out either way, right? They're bringing the share count down. What what stood out to to, to you in the quarter? I'm just uh, well, thirty four percent jump in earnings, which a lot of that is tax reform, but not as much as you might think. Um, the twelve percent boost in revenue that you just mentioned was kind of really what stood out to me, um, and that's with some foreign exchange headwinds as well. Um, so that's the impressive growth. The revenue growth is the really impressive thing to notice with pretty much all of these financial earnings, since we're still less than a year in from tax reform. Um, Visa still growing at a double digit rate. They're anticipating growing at a double digit rate, and that's another company I had a chance to briefly speak with at Money, and they couldn't stop talking about just how much untapped opportunity there is, especially in overseas markets, and. Um, they mentioned something like 70% of transactions still take place in cash. So, if you think that the card market is getting saturated, think again. There's still a lot of runway here. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember. Uh, I, I'm sure I've mentioned it before, but just in the time we lived in Egypt, in, you know, for three years in, in uh, early 2000s, and then onward to, in in Kazakhstan. I mean, those were two economies that were we just it was plainly they just ran uh, so much on cash. I mean, they just didn't have that infrastructure yet. And so, yeah, when you look at it from a global perspective, I mean, you certainly do understand the opportunity that still exists and how many dollars. Dollars are, uh, are are flowing through those networks today, and how many will be flowing uh, flowing through them in, in the next ten years? I'm just just make make companies like that so attractive. Uh, uh, Sil- Silicon Valley Bank, maybe maybe a company that most of our listeners might not be as familiar with, but but you are familiar with it. Tell me uh, what your takeaways from the quarter were. Yeah, so they beat on earnings, but the stock like plunged right after the report. Um, which kind of looks puzzling at first, but when you dig into it, this is a bank that has been really a beneficiary of its Silicon Valley Bank Corp of kind of the booming economy of startups and things like that in Silicon Valley. And because of that, because of their relationship with all the startups and venture capital out there, they get a big low cost deposit base, which has been growing rapidly. This quarter, the deposit growth was just about 2%, which kind of is not as good as investors were hoping for. Uh, interest margins, because they have a big, low-cost deposit base and rates are rising. Everyone wanted to see margins expand a little more than they did. I think they only expanded by about three basis points. So, well, on the surface, it looks good. And the bank's still growing at a pretty impressive level. The numbers just quite weren't what investors were looking for. Well, it happens, right? That happens. It does. <laughs> um, and another one, I got a few questions uh, on Twitter last week about this one, so I wanted to make sure we gave it a little bit of attention. Ellie May, a uh, company I'm a big fan of. I know a lot of our members and listeners uh, are fans of it, too. Uh, the stock just got shellacked after after earnings uh, came out last week. Uh, fell somewhere in the neighborhood of twenty percent or so, a little maybe maybe a little bit less, seventeen eighteen percent. Uh, and and I, I think this is one where the bark was much worse than the actual bite. I don't think things are nearly as bad as that sell off would have you believe. But with that said, I mean what we're seeing play out is really one of the biggest risks that we called out in investing in this company. And Ellie May being the mortgage software provider uh, has really benefited from this just huge stretch of low interest rates where people are refinancing, it seems like, on an annual basis. Um, and, and so, with rates starting to go back up, the refinance volume is drying up, and, and they need to make up for that lost volume on the purchase side. But, of course, you know, I mean, purchases are only going to take, take, uh, take care of so much here. And so, you know, management, they guided back on full year revenue guidance. 
They guided back on the actual number of contracted seats uh, that they see filling out for 2018. So, those clearly aren't good things. They tell us that things are slowing down a little bit. But by the same token, I mean, we're looking at a company, they, they actually gained 1% in terms of volume expansion in the face of a market that was down 13%. So, they're maintaining and actually picking up a little bit of share in what is a very tough market. They do see the housing market getting a little bit better uh, in in the coming months, going into spring of 2019, I think one of the biggest challenges right now is a lack of inventory out there for uh, entry level home buyers. Uh, but but the bottom line is that when you look at the actual business itself, uh, they're continuing to do good things. They're growing the active users. They're closing more loans. They're they're taking the the revenue per closed loan is is on the rise. So these are all good things. I think that uh, you know we're witnessing a bit more of a macro thing as opposed to a business thing. If you don't own shares of Ellie Mae and you always wanted to, I think this is probably your good opportunity to at least take a closer look. Uh, for full disclosure, I own shares of Ellie Mae. I didn't sell them. I'm not going to sell them. I love this business. I'm going to hang on to them. Uh, definitely, you know, some, some macro concerns out there. They're going to play out on these guys for, for the coming quarters. The big risk is did they get everything out there this quarter or are they going to guide down again in a quarter or two to come? Hopefully, they they threw out the kitchen sink this past quarter, but but it's always possible that they come out next quarter and things don't look uh, quite as good as maybe they hoped, and they guide back down again. If that's the case, well, you know the stock may see uh, tougher days ahead. But you know, I mean, it's a good business, it's a growing business, it's a profitable business, it's cash flow positive business, a lot of good things here, uh, and, and they are clearly building a platform that consumers uh, or that that their customers like and are using. Uh, so I, I wouldn't get too worked up over it. Um, you know, wasn't one the greatest quarter in the world, but it wasn't as bad as I think the market would have you uh, believe.